if machine A at IP address 6.6.6.2 wanted to communicate with machine C at IP address 8.8.8.4 over the IPv4 protocol, the following process would occur. First, machine A would create a new IP packet with the field's source address set to be 6.6.6.2 and destination address 8.8.8.4. I would also have a TTL of 64 and many other fields, but those are less interesting to us. Okay, so it would send this off to its default gateway. And since there's only one router on this network, the default gateway will be this endpoint over here. And uh, we'll assume that all these devices are connected with um, Ethernet. Okay, so it's going to wrap this segment up with a Ethernet header where the source MAC address is going to be the address with all A's. So I'll just shorten that to AA and I'll put two colons over here for the rest. The destination address will be our first router, okay? And that's because, again, the Ethernet only provides a single hop and we have to chain these together to get to our final destination. So our destination in this case is going to be the MAC address uh, 11111111111111. Okay, so I'll just abbreviate that as 11. Okay, once it reaches the router, the Ethernet header is torn off. We don't need this value anymore. Um, the TTL is decremented by one to be 63. If this ever hits zero, we throw it out uh, because there's likely some type of loop. Okay, um, so, but these, this source and destination address are preserved. So we don't really change these values, okay? Because they sort of help us guide us to our final destination in case that there was, um, in, in a more typical example, it wouldn't be sort of three networks. It would be maybe 10 networks or 20 networks in between. We don't have any control of how many networks are, are intermediaries, okay? So the source and destination are sort of guiding us to um, to our final destination. And we'll talk about routing protocols in the next lecture. But again, for, for, for now, just assume that we have some Oracle device that this router knows that if I want to go to, if, if I'm trying to send a message to 8.8.8.4, I know that I have to go through here. And that going through here is, is not the right answer, OK? So we'll, we'll just assume that for now, and in the next lecture, we'll, we'll go into the details of how it decides between two paths. OK, so I'm just going to quickly rewrite this, 6.6.6.2 and 8.8.8.4. OK, so that's our source and destination IP address. OK, so this router um, it has two MAC addresses, one for each network. OK, um, it's going to add a new uh, data link layer header. Okay, so its source MAC address is now two, uh, the address of all twos, and the destination MAC address is the one with all fours. Okay, and the TTL for this one is 63. Okay, so that's how we get from um, this router to um, the router on the correct network. Okay. So at this point, we're actually not finished yet, OK? Um, we're going to go with the worst case scenario. And in the best case scenario that this router, inside of its ARP table, it already has machine C. So it knows about machine C. But it's also possible that uh, machine C, when it connected, it got its um, IP address allocated by one of these other two routers, OK? So it did DHCP. And because it was so close to um, this router, OK, um, this router gave machine C a IP address and not this one. 
okay? Um, the consequence of that is that this router may not know the IP address of machine C, okay? So assume that this router does not, inside of its ARP table, it does not have an entry for 8.8.8.4, okay? Uh, but it knows that it's part of this network because it fits the, the CIDR address. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to broadcast an ARP request. Okay, so an ARP request is a broadcast message that goes out to every device on the network saying something like, hey, I'm looking for the address 8.8.8.4. Okay, so if we have other machines on these networks, because they don't own that IP address, they'll just ignore that request. But C, because it knows it owns this IP address, it will respond back to our router, okay? And then our, our router will update its um, ARP table with the correct address. And then finally, it will make the, the, final, um, the, the final message, which is going to be, let's clear this up a bit. Okay, so again, this stays the same. The TTL decreases again to 62. And this time, the wrapper from our source, MAC address, is five, the address of all fives. And our destination is the, mission, the address of all Cs. Okay? And that's how um, our machine A can deliver a message to machine C. Um, by chaining together multiple data link layer hops.